Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a book haul for you. This is my spring book haul. You'll notice it's a slightly different setting, that's because I'm filming in my room because that's where the hauled books are until I find where they need to go on my shelves. There's quite a few more here than I was hoping to be showing you. You may remember that I supposedly was on a book buying ban. Hasn't really worked out and it's actually a slight issue because I am running out of space and the size of my TBR is still going in the wrong direction. So these books are from a variety of places. So I've broken them down into slight categories which you'll see as we go along. So the first two books I'm gonna talk about are ones that are like reference books. So they're ones that aren't actually actively going on my TBR which is quite nice. First one I've got is a book called How Not to Kill Your House Plants which is a Darling Kindersley book. So the funny story about this is my parents and I saw it in a garden centre and they were joking with me about how I needed to buy this book because I have a reputation for killing my house plants. But it was £10 and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to spend that much on it. And then I forgot about it and a couple of days later I was in a local charity shop and I saw it there. I don't know if you can see the price label. For £1.50. So I thought, at £1.50 I'm going to give it a try. And actually it has some really good tips in it that have helped me revive some of my slightly failing houseplants. So that was a really good buy. And then secondly, in sort of the reference book field, I have the Apocryphal New Testament, edited by J.K. Eliot. So this is a collection of early Christian literature. So it was books and letters and things that were written around the same time as the books which were formed into the New Testament when that, that was sort of put together. And these were the ones that didn't make the cut for whatever reason. I've been wanting a copy of these for a long time and we saw this in a book sale. It was at a local National Trust place with my parents and they were teasing me about how I wasn't meant to be looking at the used bookstall. And then I saw this one and I actually think I still owe my mum money for buying this book because I didn't have any cash with me on the day. Probably should pay her back. As someone who is very interested in theology, particularly in how the Bible was put together as a feminist theologian, I thought this would be a really good book to have for my reference, particularly as I'm hoping to study more theology in the future. So next we're going to go on to a couple of books that I bought to replace omnibus editions of books. You may remember that I had this realisation back in March that I don't like omnibus editions, so I've been gradually starting to replace some of the books I have in omnibus editions with single volume books, and so I'm very excited about these next two. I got these from my lovely friends at Ninja Book Box from their online shop. So they sell um, independently published works, and I've been lo looking for nicer editions of works by the Brontes because I had an omnibus edition of one book from each sister and someone had given me a really nice edition of Jane Eyre a few years ago and I've been wanting to replace the other two books since then and then coincidentally while well, I was looking for them in Hey or My and couldn't find editions that I really actually liked that were reasonable in price and then I saw on the Ninja Book Box website these lovely two editions, Folio Society editions of Wuthering Heights and The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. You can see those there, they've got these gorgeous spines, they're matching ones as well. These are my first Folio Society editions and so I'm really excited to have them. I think they're illustrated as well, yes they've got these really gorgeous illustrations and they're in really really good condition as well and so I'm so excited to have these. I really enjoyed both of these books. I enjoyed The Tenet of Wildfell Hall more than Wuthering Heights when I read it but I'm due a reread of all of them. That is those two and so now I have the three books that were in that omnibus edition I have in single volumes so I can now get rid of that omnibus edition which is very exciting. The other book that I got to replace an omnibus one is actually technically another omnibus. This is The Christmas Stories by Charles Dickens so in my Dickens omnibus I had Oliver Twist, Great Expectations and A Christmas Carol. I'd already read A Christmas Carol so I wasn't too worried about replacing this but again I found this in a charity shop for £1.50. So this is three Christmas stories, it's got A Christmas Carol, it has got I think it's The Chimes and The Cricket on the Hearth. So that's three Christmas novels by Dickens but you can see it's a very slim volume, they're all sort of novellas really not novels so I got that so that I have now replaced that omnibus edition again with single volumes although this 
is technically also an omnibus but it's not a big one. Right next I'm gonna go on to books that I was given. This I'll go through quite quickly really. Um, my dad's been having a bit of a clear out again and has given me uh, the entire Pendragon Cycle by Stephen Lawhead. Stephen Lawhead is one of his favourite authors but I think he decided that he's reread these recently and he won't reread them again so there are six books in this series. We've got Taliesin, Merlin, Arthur, Pendragon, Grail and then Avalon which I'm not sure if it's officially part of the Pendragon cycle or if it's a standalone. These are all novelizations of the story of King Arthur. I did read Taliesin a long long time ago and I really enjoyed it so I've been looking forward to rereading these. I now have quite a large collection of Stephen Lawhead books to get through so we'll see how that goes. And then one more book that I was given a while back on Twitter someone called Mooncastrel offered to buy things from people's Amazon wish list so I linked up mine and she bought me Nerilka's story and the Colura which is in the Pern series by Anne McCaffrey. So I have some of these books, I've been trying to collect them all. I again read a few of them when I was younger but have not read any for a long time. So this was the next one on the list that I didn't own and I've been intending to reread these or reread the ones that I had read before and read the others that I hadn't read before. So I'm going to try and get on to starting the series this year because I'd like to read this one soon as it was bought for me. And next we're going to go on to the pre-orders that I had outstanding. So I had four pre-orders arrive within the months from March to June, which is sort of the period this is covering. The first one of these is Gallo Glass by Scarlett Thomas. This is the third book in the Wildquake series. I'm going to try and read this one in the next couple of months so that I can be completely caught up on that series. Uh, another book that I pre-ordered because, I mean, I pre-ordered all of these because I was really excited about them. The next two it was because I've read other works by the authors that I really enjoyed and just wanted to support the authors really by pre-ordering their books and I was intending to read them sort of pretty much as soon as I got them but I haven't got around to it yet. So the next one is The Boy Who Steals Houses by C.G. Drews. C.G. Drews is quite famous on book Twitter. She's a blogger and this is her second book. Her first book a Thousand Perfect Notes. It came out a year ago and I really really loved it so I definitely wanted to buy this one. I was going to read this during Autism Awareness Month but because I work with a lot of young people on the autism spectrum it felt a bit too close to home to actually read this so this has own voices autism rep. I thought it would feel too much like work to read it during sort of my general working life so I'm planning to take this away with me over the summer when I have a bit of holiday and I have a bit of distance from my job because I love working with the young people I work with but I just don't necessarily want to read about similar young people in my free time while I'm working with those young people. I hope that doesn't make me an awful person. The next book that I pre-ordered was The Quiet at the End of the World by Lauren James. The Loneliest Girl in the Universe was one of my favourite books of 2017 so I was really excited that she had another book coming out and look how beautiful this cover is. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So this came out I think in March and again it's one I've not quite got round to yet but I'm sure I'll fly through it when I do because I loved The Loneliest Girl in the Universe so this is again quite high priority to get to soon. And then the last book that I had on pre-order was We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. I've been following her on Twitter for, again for a while and I was really excited to see this book was coming out. It's Eastern inspired fantasy. I've heard really really good things about it so I'm really keen to get around to reading it. So the next few books I'm going to talk about are ones that I got from Kickstarter campaigns. I like to support independent presses on Kickstarter when I can to try and help them grow because independent presses, you, I mean you, if you watch my channel you know how much I love indie published books and they just publish things that other people won't. The first one of these, you may have heard me talk about some of these books before, is Tilted Axis Press and they did a Kickstarter for their Translating Feminism series. So there were three books that were the ones we were supporting and then they actually produced a fourth book as a thank you to the supporters of their Kickstarter. So the first two I've actually read which were Night by Suluchanu Mananda which is a collection of Nepalese poems and then we've also got Moon Fevers by Nathuin. I did look up how to pronounce it this time. And so I've read both of these and really enjoyed them. This is a collection of Vietnamese poems. And I was so glad that when I read these that I'd supported this Kickstarter because otherwise I would never have come across these lovely books of poetry. They're so different to Western poetry, really, really beautiful. And I mean, credit to the translators as well to be able to convey so beautifully something from another language, like poetry, there's a rhythm and a flow to the word 
words that you have to try and convey as well and so so much respect for these translators and these authors. So the final one that was part of the Kickstarter was Desires Become Demons which is a collection of poems translated from Tamil. I think there are four different poets that were included in this collection and then the gift book was Against Healing which is a collection of poems translated from Korean. So really looking forward to picking up those two. The other book that I got from a Kickstarter campaign is from a new press called Budica Press. This is a book called Disturbing the Beast. So this is a collection of short stories of women's weird fiction. They've described it as. Of the authors, the one that I'd heard of before was Elia Whiteley. I read one of her books, The Arrival of Missives, a couple of years ago and it was super weird but really really awesome. So when I knew that she was involved in this collection and it was a brand new press that they were trying to launch and I love feminist fiction as well so I was really keen to pick this up and also I really love the cover, it's quite creepy and awesome. So while we're on the subject of indie publishers, you may know that I subscribe to several indie publishers. I have actually also got a new subscription I'll get to in a minute, but I've had one more book from my Perrine Press subscription, You Would Have Missed Me by Birgit van der Beek. So this is translated from German. Yeah, really excited to get into this because I love Perrine Press because they specialise in translated fiction, mainly from European countries so I don't really know what this is about it's literally only just arrived a couple of days ago so I'm really looking forward to getting to that one and then I did sign up to a new in indie subscription because I have a problem <laughs> so my latest subscription is to Dead Ink Books and um, so I'm part of their advanced readers club and for the privilege I also got a lovely tote bag from them which I would show you but it's downstairs and I can't be bothered to go and get it and then I got the first book that they've released this year which is Please Read This Leaflet Carefully by Karen ha Havelin. Havelin. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her surname. Actually turns out she is from Norway, so this will also count towards my read around the world. Boop, boop. So this was a book that I actually had on pre-order from Amazon and then I realised that it was dead ink and that it was going to be part of their advanced readers club. So I cancelled my pre-order and bought it direct from the publisher because if you want to support indie publishers, that's a really good way to do it is to buy your books direct from them when possible rather than from the big stores. The next collection are books that I bought either from library sales or from charity shops. The first two are linked to TV shows that I really enjoyed. So the first one is called Our Zoo by June Mottershead. So this is a true story of the founding of Chester Zoo by June Mot Mottershead's family. It was her dad that set it up and this was adapted for TV by the BBC a few years ago and I really enjoyed that drama series. So when I saw this in a charity shop I thought actually I think I'll really like this book. And then in the library, uh, in the library book sale I found this one which is called Lady Catherine and the Real Downton Abbey, written by the Countess of Carnarvon. So this is about the family that lived at Highclere Castle where Downton Abbey was filmed. I really love Downton Abbey and I'm quite keen to read this book and sort of read some of the story that is thought to have inspired the writing of Downton Abbey. Anyway, so that's that one. The next one I again got at the National Trust Place. So this is The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula Le Guin. This is science fiction. It's considered to be a classic. It apparently won both the Hugo and Nebula Awards. I have not read any of her science fiction before. I did read the Earthsea Quartet when I was younger and have been wanting to read more of her works since then. So when I saw this I thought I'll give it a try. It sounds like quite an interesting story about a remote planet that has been isolated from the rest of the universe and then a convoy of ships arrives sort of quite standard sci-fi really it sounds like to me but I'm really looking forward to giving that one a try. The next two books actually are both ones I got from library sales and the first one of these is The Daughters of Mars by Thomas Keneally. Thomas Keneally is best known for writing Schindler's Ark which was made into the film Schindler's List. I used to work in a library when I was a teenager and always tried to pick out his books to borrow but I haven't read anything he wrote for years so when I saw this one I thought actually it's a good time to get back into his writing. So this one is about two Australian sisters who become nurses during the First World War. So he has just a really beautiful writing style so I'm really excited to read that one. And again on the war theme, although this time Second World War, I have The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris which is a book that I've heard a lot of good things about and actually when I bought it in the library the librarian said it's a really really excellent book. So the next books are books that I bought new for various reasons. Three of them go together. If you watch my channel regularly you'll have heard me talk about a book that I'm currently reading called Inspired by Rachel Held Evans who was a Christian feminist theologian 
prolific blogger and writer who was just really inspiring and really supportive of marginalised communities within the church and really worked hard to promote their voices. She sadly passed away at the beginning of May and since then I've just gone out and bought all of her books. She had written four books, Inspired, which I've already mentioned, and so then I've got three of her other books here. So the first one is A Year of Biblical Womanhood. So I've had, I have read bits of this before because we read excerpts of it when I was doing my masters and I've been meaning to buy it for ages just haven't got around to it so this is her sort of record of a year that she spent trying to follow all the instructions given to women in the bible then this actually I think was her first book this is called Faith Unraveled this is about the town that she grew up in which was famous for something to do with evolution theory of evolution I'm not entirely sure So I'm really interested to read this. Anyway, and then finally we have Searching for Sunday, which again is about balancing what the church says and what the world says and sort of trying to find a path between them. So that, that's for those. And while I was on Word buying those, I felt the urge to buy a couple of other things as well that I've wanted for a while. So I picked up The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. So this is the first in the Poirot books. I have some of the Poirot books and once I've finished all the Marple books that I'm currently reading, through I'm going to start working through the primary ones so I needed to get the first one and to be able to start doing that really excited to get to this one soon once I've finished all the Marple books another book that I've been wanting to read for a really long time is Who Fears Death by Nadia Okorafor which has actually I think only very recently been released in the UK I've read a couple of Nadia Okorafor's books before and I really love her style I love the whole of sort of African sci-fi setting. So I wanted to read this for a while and I just couldn't wait any longer so I have bought it. I really love this cover as well. Again, it's beautiful. So that is going on to the TBR, hopefully to get to very soon. I just have two more books to talk about. One of them I have actually already mentioned is the relaunch of Ninja Book Club, yay! I'm really excited to read this one. This is The Magician's Lie by Graham McAllister. This is about the amazing Arden, who is the most famous female illusionist of her time. And when her husband dies in mysterious circumstances, she is accused of his murder. So she's got to try and clear her name. People who have already started reading this for Ninja Book Club have really loved it. So I'm going to try and get on to reading this this week. And then the final book that I have bought in the last couple of months, I wasn't expecting to buy. I didn't even know it existed. And then I met the author. I went on my little weekend away to France I met some lovely people there and one of them was this lady Dawn James she is a really really lovely lady and she self-published this earlier in the year it's called Song of the Overworld it is about a young lady who lives on the Isle of Skye and she plays the violin and she sort of starts to realise there's sort of a magical element to music and there are sort of musical forces for good and there are other forces that are trying to stop music from existing. <laughs> so she signed it for me and personalised it, which is really cool. And I'm looking forward to reading this one really, really soon. And I will be reviewing it, I'm sure. And hopefully I will love it and be able to tell Dawn that I love it because it'd be really awkward if I don't like it. But I'm sure I'll love it. It's exactly the sort of type of book that I love. It is YA magical realism, really. So I don't know how many books it is. Way more than I was meant to obtain. I was meant to not be buying any books and um, part of my goal for this year was to get my Goodreads TBR down below the 500 mark. Yes, you heard that right, below 500. So I've just double checked that all the books I've bought this year are actually on my Goodreads and most of them weren't and so I've now added them all to my Goodreads TBR and it, it's actually gone up from what it was at the start of the year. So at the start of the year it was about 539 and I thought I was doing really well because I got it down to like about 510 I think and I've just added all of these and it's now back up to like 550 something so that is just shockingly bad. I'm not going to say I'm on a book buying ban anymore because that is just clearly unrealistic for me but I'm going to be doing what I think is termed a low buy where I'm going to try really 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 hard to only buy books that I need to continue on series that I'm reading plus the Ninja Book Club books and the subscriptions I already have from indie presses so I'll be keeping them. So that's all from me for today. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. If you think I should be prioritising any of them and bumping them up the TBR please do let me know and let me know how you stop yourself from buying books because I really need help with that. Otherwise that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you haven't and you can catch me on my social media 
ideas, all that information is listed in the description box below. So all that's left is to say thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye! Thank you.